Um, one thing is, as I said, you know, before, right? We dis I decide to be religious. So meaning that I decide that there's a higher, you know, like you know, my um, um, co-panelist alluded to, is a higher power that I want to follow because I personally believe God knows me, knows me better than I am, you know. So that is the higher uh, belief that I kind of get myself into. So the freedom is defined within that context for me because it's my choice to do this this belief. Uh, but the, the context that we need to look into is, you know, sometimes I think religions are overly analyzed for are they giving freedom to men and women equally, right? Um, and actually, I'm going to just uh, give a personal experience again. I did my PhD at University of Arizona, right? And actually, I come from a family that already made me believe that anything I can do, you know, I can do. And, and I def definitely understood my religion that way, right? So I actually came from Turkey, you know, attending the PhD program, and I decided to be a college professor, you know, maybe a ten, you know, tenure track professor, actually, I would have liked. So I went to my professor and I said, okay, so I want to start applying. And he said, well, you have a child now. I had my first child. I said, yeah. He goes, well, I don't think you can be a professor anymore. I said, really? He said, yes. And I actually understood my limits there because that was a society driven limits, you know, 10 years ago, right? And I'm not talking a couple years ago, but 10 years ago when I finished my PhD and I was the first PhD student who is graduating with a child. So my professor told having a child has a big burden. And what did I say? Of course, as a very free woman, I said, didn't you have kids? He said, yes, but my wife took care of them. So I understood my very American professor uh, told me that it's my responsibility, never even asked that if my husband would have loved to take care of my, take care of my kids, never even made that this, he already assumed that it's me who needs to take care of the child, and it's not gonna, and it's, it, it can't be that I can be a tenure track professor having a toddler around, you know. Mm. So that kind of um, told me my limits, you know, right? That I never had before in religion. So just coming from, from that point of view, of course, you can tell my shock, you know, when people tell me, oh, you look like such a, an independent woman, and then, you know, you're religious. You know, I was like, yeah, I actually learned a lot more discrimination against that the society defines. It has nothing to do with religion. It's society's definition and their beliefs. So when you're looking from that point of view, um, freedom is defined with people. And I think, you know, it was a, it was a great delusion. Like every society has a very different definition of freedom. And when I go back to Tur Turkey, talk to my parents, they have a very different understanding of what the freedom is than I do. Because you know, I, I've grown up. You know, I got educated, and I'm I'm in in uh, United States. But how the religion portrays freedom on men and women equally is really the discussion. And and I completely agree with my um, co-panelists again that we are not the same. You know, we can't dis discuss that we are the same, right? I live this every day. You know, basically, it's so funny actually. Of course, I'm a working mother of three, and my husband is a great help to me. But every time I leave my kids with my husband, I call three times just to check on him, just to make sure everything is OK. And when he leaves them with me, he never remembers. So this goes to the fact that you know, we're really very different. And to me, child care starts with you know, the food, the nurture, the care given to my husband. It's all play. You know, I come and the home is like, you know, a whole mess because to him, it's all playing together. So, you know, looking at it from that perspective, I never think that I'm exactly the same with a man, you know. And I think putting that expectation on the people is even limiting their freedom. Like in a company, I was actually at the UN attending the women's rights um, conferences the last two weeks that they had CSW 58. So it was so funny. There was a... Um, there was a um, VP of sales of a um, beer industry. So she actually told about her experience. And she said, I never thought there was discrimination until I came to the VP level. And I realized there was discrimination then because if I was too kind, then I wasn't stern enough. 
if I was, you know, very strict, then I didn't understand anybody who's woman. You know, so she's like, I, that's what that was the first time that I got discrimination. So I think looking at religions, I even from that point of view, that what are the expectations? You know, am I expected to perform the same way as a man does? And is it equality? Is it freedom? If I, with my own kids, have to be 60 hours a day in the same job as my male colleague, obviously I'm different and my sensitivity is different. So is it fair? Is it really freedom? So I think when we're defining these terminologies, and I'm not sure if, um, uh, I don't know if you read um, Anne Mary Slaughter's um, last year's article at Atlantic, actually, she came to my company to talk, which I was lucky to, to kind of meet with her as well. She's a Harvard graduate for those who, uh, sorry, Princeton uh, graduate for those who don't know, and she's, uh, she actually was a dean um, at the law school of Princeton, and she was a um, um, consultant to Hillary Clinton, actually worked with her. Um, the, uh, and she actually decided to come back home for her kids. And she said, um, the choices that we need to make is not freedom, because my choice is either you give up on your on on the personal life and then have a very successful career, or you don't get it's zero one right. You don't get a mixture, uh, you know. And it was it was really interesting. Like, uh, and I would definitely suggest you guys uh, you know go and read it. It's of course not like this couple sentences that I'm giving you. It's a lot more depth of information. Uh, but I think that's what we need to argue, the society's role who gives us, you know, and how it defines us to be free. Um, but when we talk about religion, I, I think one thing to understand is, and it was again great context, is really the um, tradition itself. And for myself, for Islam, the tradition actually started in our uh, in our prophet's time, right? When you, we look at their time, we see the first verse arriving, read. For anybody, it doesn't say male or female. Read is the first verse. But still, today you see some countries not allowing girl education, and it's such a hassle to get girls educated. So you can't really blame religion for that when the first verse ever arriving is read. And when you know one of our prophet's wives is the first teacher to male or female audience, or the other wife, basically his first wife, was actually a businesswoman, you know, who really ran a huge business. So, so without looking those, I think we kind of jump to the conclusion, like the assumption in the, um, in the first question as well, like, okay, the context and the texts tell you that you can't be free, so then how can you be religious and, and independent and free at the same time? Uh, but actually, I think it's really more looking at the traditions and understanding and not really going to religions to justify the freedom of women, but to the societies, because I think we still have a lot of work to do. I mean, just, you know, being, a, um, ma being at the management on a large company, um, I can tell you, I still think that there's a lot more work to do in the society, not in my religion or not, um, not in any, any religion. I think it's more how we kind of try to coexist and define our existence, not only defining the roles of the you know, men or women according to ourselves. And that's one of the things I think we as a whole society have to, has to define and improve the roles of, uh, roles of women and men together. Um, and I think religions can, can help us because uh, at the end, we know a lot of the rights that need to happen there was given, right, economical rights, that nobody had economical rights in before 1952 in this country. They couldn't even own unless that they were married and divorced. And I actually, I wouldn't have known this if I didn't visit the town called Jim Thorpe, and I don't know if you ever been to that town. Um, so in that town, you know, basically you kind of see and, and meet with people and you realize is a Packer's daughter who actually was supposed to inherit about you know, 100 and 150 million today's money, uh, couldn't inherit it because she was never married. So she had to marry and divorce somebody to inherit um, the, the money. So these are, I think, more society's issues. And unfortunately, as I said, it hasn't been that we always had this linear trajectory for women's rights, right? So it was great, and then it went down with the society, and then the understanding goes up again and then goes down again. And I think this is a journey that we all have to work together to understand. Uh, but understanding the, uh, you know, kind of the freedom that religion gives and basically understand, 
you know, uh, that we still have a long way to get there. You know, basically, I think from the current 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 state we are in.